No. 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 What have I done? What have I done? It wasn't supposed to end this way. This wasn't supposed to happen. Don't you understand? I, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to force his hand. I, I just wanted to, to help him to do what we all knew he could do. Yes. I'm Judas, the hated one. And every one of your gospel writers will, will include these words after my name, the one who betrayed him. I suppose my, my name should be included right along with that other coward Pontius Pilate. And your Apostles' Creed, I, I suppose it should say, suffered under Pontius Pilate, betrayed. By Judas but then I don't I don't have to tell you who I am do I you know who I am you wouldn't you wouldn't think of of naming a child after me never in a million years I know that it didn't used to be that way Judas Judas was a good name a proud name when my parents saw that they had a son, they gave me a name that reflected their faith and their joy. Judas, praise of God. Praise of God. If only, if only I could have lived up to that name. Oh, you know me as Judas Iscariot. That, that simply means that I was from a, a small village in southern Palestine, Kerioth. Uh, my name would be better pronounced Judas Iscariot. In other words, Judas, the, the one from Kerioth. I'll never forget that day that Jesus called me. I was standing outside the temple in Jerusalem and and his eyes met mine. Well, Jesus' eyes really never met anyone's. Jesus' eyes penetrated your eyes. He seemed to, to be able to, to look inside of a person. And he looked at me and he, he pointed at me and he, he said, Judas, follow me. Follow me. And I did. I didn't have to think twice about it. I, I went right with him. And why shouldn't I? We believed that, that he was the promised one. We, we believed he was the one that was sent, the Messiah. We believed he was, he was our answer to prayer. Oh, I know. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you're thinking, why Judas? Why did, why did Jesus call you? Why did he call Judas? Can I ask you a question? Why did he call you? You claim to be his followers, don't you? You say you're his disciple. You think you're his friend. Why'd he call you? Is it because he couldn't get along without you? His ministry would be a failure without you? No. He called you for the same reason he called me. Because you see, when Jesus looks at you, he doesn't just see what everyone else sees. He doesn't just see who you are. 
He sees who you might become. And that's why he called me. And that's why he called you. So for two years, I followed him. I heard his matchless teaching. I saw his unbelievable miracles. I saw him feed thousands of people with a little kid's lunch. I saw him walk on water. I saw him raise people from the dead. Yeah, raise people from the dead. (laughs) Believe me, that'll get your attention. You'd think I would have grown in grace and stature with the master, but instead I just became a bitter disappointment to him. Because my, my master passion was greed. When I became the treasurer of our little band of disciples, temptation visited me long and, and often. And some of, some of those coins that were supposed to go to the widows and orphans, well, some of it ended up in my purse instead of that of the disciples. It was a little thing. I didn't even think much about it. I mean, I was gonna pay it back. I was gonna give it back. It's amazing, isn't it? How when you do something wrong, you can justify it. How many of you haven't done the same thing? Maybe, Maybe you think the company isn't paying you enough or somebody else makes more money or you didn't get a bonus and so why not take a little here or there? I mean, after all, it was the least, I thought, for all of the inconvenience of being the treasurer and running the errands and getting the supplies. Friends, When you get caught in a sin, thank God. That's right. When you get caught in a sin, thank God. For it's the sin that that you don't get caught in, that you keep doing. I know Jesus tried to warn me. I didn't see it at the time, but when I look back at it, I I know he, he tried to help me. I remember that time he was teaching and I was standing in the back of the crowd and and he looked right at me. And he said, beware of the the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For nothing that is covered won't be revealed. Nothing that is hidden won't be uncovered. And then he said, A man's abundance does not consist in his possessions. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, he said, would be added to you. Why couldn't I see it? Why couldn't I understand? Still, if he was the Messiah and we knew he was, he seemed to be going about it in all of the wrong ways. He was angering the very people he he ought to be making friends with and Well, then this talk about dying, it frightened me. I didn't know what to do. It all all seemed to come to a head one day at the house of Simon the leper. Lazarus was there with us. Martha was serving. Mary brought this expensive perfume and poured it over Jesus. I said, wait a minute. We we could have sold that perfume. We, We could have got a lot of money for it. We could have given that money to the poor. Why waste it? I didn't care about the poor. I just knew that if we sold that, some of that money would have ended up right here. And that's what I cared about. And then when Jesus 
began to praise Mary for what she had done. It was too much. I left and I went to the house of the chief priests. And I said, what will you give me to hand you Jesus? You should have seen their smiles. You should have seen their smiles. Seems they had just been talking about how they could arrest Jesus without, without arousing the crowd, without creating a disturbance. And now I was giving them exactly what they wanted. How much will you give me? 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. That's the price of a lowly slave. But that's all they would give. And so I took it. Because you see, I thought, if I put Jesus in that kind of a situation where he had to exert his authority, where, where he had to take control, where he, where he had to use his power, that, that he had the ability to, to restore Israel to its rightful place, to restore the Israelites to their rightful place. And I was sure if I, if I could just force him, he would do it. Then there was the night in the upper room. It was just Jesus and, and the 12 of us. It was a Passover dinner. And normally when there's a dinner like that, there's a, a servant there to, to wash everybody's feet. There was no servant. The, the basin was there, the water was there, the towel was there, but there was no servant. And, well, none of us were gonna stoop to do that, that a slave would do. Can you imagine our embarrassment when the master took off his robe and wrapped the towel around his waist and began to wash our feet? We didn't know what to say. Peter, Peter said, no, no, Lord, you, I won't let you. I won't let you wash my feet. It's not right. Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you have no place with me in the kingdom. And Peter said, well, then, then wash all of me. Why, why, wash me from head to toe. And Jesus said, that's not necessary because, you see, there's only one here who is unclean. And then I knew that he knew what I had done. I was sure he would point his finger at me and tell everyone else, but he didn't. Instead, when we sat down for supper, he said, one of you is going to betray me tonight. Everyone was shocked and they all started saying, is it I, Lord, is it I, it's surely not me. I played my hypocritical part to the end, and I said, is it I? Jesus said, it's the one to whom I give the bread after it has been dipped, and he handed it to me. Still, I don't think the others even understood. He looked at me, and he said, what you have to do, do quickly. I got up and left. Still, I don't think the others knew what was going on. They, they probably assumed that Jesus had sent me on another errand like he often did. I went to the chief priests and I, I said, tonight, tonight's the night. He'll be in the Garden of Gethsemane and there'll only be a few disciples. You won't have any trouble. You should have seen them move then. They began gathering together every soldier, every servant, every slave, Till there were hundreds on their way to the garden with torches, clubs, and swords. When they got there, Jesus saw them coming. He said, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus said, I am he. And there was 
in that moment like a mighty arm from heaven that came down and everyone there was thrown to the ground. We got up and Jesus said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And again, everyone was thrown to the ground. And I thought, this is it. This is it. Jesus is going to do exactly what I knew he could do. I ran up to him as if he was a long lost friend. It was our agreed upon signal with the chief priest. I embraced him. I kissed him. He looked at me. You know what he said? Friend. He called me friend. Friend, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? I stepped back, sure that this would be the moment I had been waiting for. But instead, the crowd rushed forward. They grabbed Jesus. They began to, to, to lead him off. I, I watched from a distance. I, I saw them spit upon him, mock him, beat him. I didn't understand what was going on. I, I didn't know what to think. I, I, I saw that mockery of a trial when, when they brought witnesses that couldn't agree in their lies. I, I saw them take him to Pilate. I, I heard the crowd shout, crucify him, crucify him. And I realized Jesus was going to let them kill him. He wasn't going to do anything. I ran back to the house of the chief priest. Uh, I took the money they had given me. Uh, I, I said, here, take it back, take it back. I've betrayed innocent blood. They just laughed. They just laughed. What is that to us, they said. What is that to us? Go see to it yourself. Never, never take your confession to the world. Take it to the one who said, come to me. Come to me. You who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so I, I stood at a crossroad. On the one hand, was a loving savior and a cross. On the other, the valley of Hinnon. In a tree, in a low hanging branch. And I thought, maybe this, maybe this is the answer. Maybe this will rid me of the guilt and the horror and the shame that I felt. But it wasn't. And so, in that moment, I made the, the biggest mistake anyone could ever make. And I come here tonight, not so you can forget about Judas, not so you can pretend that, that he didn't exist, but so that you can remember. Because you see, whether you know it or not, you face the same decision I face every single day of your life. Do you follow him? 
or do you betray him? Do you go his way or do you go your own? Do you follow his plan or do you think your, your way is better? And I come here tonight to plead with you. To plead with you. Come to him. Come to him and don't ever turn away. Don't ever betray him. Come to him. Right here. Tonight.